Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Spider-Man 3 video. A lot of you requested that I make a video about the big rumor of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back for Spider-Man 3. So I'll explain what's going on, what's being reported, and what Sony and Marvel have said about it. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. But just starting with the big stuff first, number five, a blogger was reporting inside sources had told him that Sony was negotiating with both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield themselves to come back for Spider-Man 3 with Tom Holland for big cameo scenes. Blogs everywhere picked it up. You probably saw it all over the internet, all over social media, all the headlines reading live action Spider-Verse confirmed, etc, etc. So Sony's official statement on the matter last night was simply, those reports are not confirmed. They didn't have anything else to say about it. Marvel just started filming Spider-Man 3 this week with Tom Holland, which is why you're seeing so much more Spider-Man news right now. Marvel on the other side of this rumor typically never responds to rumors of any kind. If you saw big websites reporting rumors of Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Iron Man in the Black Widow movie, Marvel wouldn't say anything about it. Their default is to not respond at all. Usually that winds up being better because when Sony comes out and says live action Spider-Verse, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire coming back isn't confirmed yet, they're also kind of acknowledging that it might be a thing, but they maybe just haven't finished the contracts yet. Because, spoiler, am I not supposed to have what I want, what I need? Number four, Tom Holland himself hasn't spent a ton of time working with either Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield before, but he has spoken to them in the past and had a lot of really nice things to say about them with respect to the Spider-Man of it all. These are the clips of him explaining his meetings with both of them. Andrew was so lovely. We had a really good chat together. Um, I met Toby very briefly, but they're both nice guys. He's a really, really great actor. Um, I don't know if you've seen his work. He was in this movie, The Impossible, and he's just this incredibly powerful, um, sensitive, just wonderful young actor and a, a dancer. So his 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 body is the right. I, I'm just really excited to just be a fan again, as opposed to um, bearing the weight of it. So like he said, he grew up watching the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies as a kid, just like everybody else. He's also a big fan of Andrew Garfield's work, not just his Spider-Man movies. Tobey Maguire hasn't been that active in terms of acting roles in the last couple of years but he's still working on his own separate projects behind the scenes. And because now we have Sam Raimi coming back to do Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness and they're filming that movie at the same time as they're filming Spider-Man 3, Doctor Strange was confirmed as a crossover character for Spider-Man 3. The idea now is that there will be some sort of live action Spider-Verse elements in Spider-Man 3. That does seem more plausible if all these things are all happening at the same time. The way they're talking about Doctor Strange in Spider-Man 3 is that he's going to become a mentor for Spider-Man, at least temporarily, in the way that Iron Man was his mentor before he died. So think about how much Iron Man was in Spider-Man Homecoming, and that's probably about how much we'll see Doctor Strange during Spider-Man 3. People always make jokes about Iron Man taking over Spider-Man Homecoming, like the movie was really Iron Man Homecoming, but when you think about it, he actually was only in a couple scenes of that movie, just a little bit at the beginning, in the middle, and then at the end. So Spider-Man 3 will still be very much a Spider-Man story about him solving his problems. He'll just get a little bit of an assist from Doctor Strange. And then the Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness movie comes out right after Spider-Man 3. So that's why also people are now thinking that Spider-Man might also cameo during Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness. The way that Thor crossed over with Doctor Strange in the post credit scene, then they did a much bigger version of that crossover later in Thor Ragnarok. Marvel is also kind of doing the same thing with Thor 4, Love and Thunder, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3, where you have the Guardians showing up at the beginning of Thor 4 to address what happened at the end of Avengers Endgame, then supposedly, according to Vin Diesel, Thor is supposed to show up in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 in some way. Thor will also, the director talked to me about how Thor will incorporate some of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which would be very interesting, nobody knows, but maybe I shouldn't have said anything. So even though the operating term of Marvel Phase 4 is multiverse, starting with all the WandaVision stuff that we're going to see later this year, big crossovers also seem like they're going to be par for the course during Marvel Phase 4. Number three, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield already almost came back as their versions of Spider-Man for the animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie. Tom Holland almost also had a cameo in that too as his version of MCU Spider-Man because they were trying to incorporate more live action elements into the crossover stuff. 
When they were still pitching the movie to Sony, Lord and Miller said that they wanted to go full Spider-Verse in the truest sense of the word, as crazy as possible with all the different versions of the characters, but Sony executives said that at the time, they felt like it was too soon to bring Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire back at the same time. When I heard that, my assumption was is they just tried to do a version of that scene during Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. They're in the middle of making that movie right now. It's supposed to come out in 2022. I know there's all this focus on live action Spider-Verse stuff, but they're still doing the animated Spider-Verse 2 in a couple years. Then around the time that they were doing the press tour for Spider-Man Far From Home a couple years ago, Amy Pascal said that the studio was also considering doing legit live action Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, crossing over Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. But at the time, and remember this is a couple of years ago, it was just an idea. They weren't actively making that movie yet. Most of their big crossover attention at that time and currently now is still focused on crossing over Spider-Man with the Venom characters. Sony's also still trying to create more spin-offs with the Spider-Man characters it controls. No joke, because of the way the Spider-Man movie rights work, they have access to over 900 different characters. So you can believe that they want more spin-offs. But then we found out about them bringing back Jamie Foxx's Electro for Spider-Man 3. So number two, the thing about Jamie Foxx coming back is that when you look at some of his Instagram posts after they made the announcement a couple weeks ago, he says he's not going to be blue this time, but he also posted a bunch of Spider-Verse pictures. That really complicates things because normally the thing about him not being blue Electro again would just mean that the version of Electro he's playing won't be the same Electro from the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie. He'd show up looking different because he was MCU Electro with a different backstory that was a little more comic book accurate in a costume that was a little more like classic Electro's costume just because that sort of MCU operating procedure. Make it look like the classic comic book version but sort of update their backstory so that it makes sense within the context of the MCU movies that have happened so far in the ending of Avengers Endgame. That's why a lot of people were making Iron Man jokes about the new Electro being another disgruntled former employee of Tony Stark, just like Mysterio. And you do joke, but in the comics, Electro did used to work for Stark Industries, so it is technically accurate to the classic Spider-Man comics. As you would expect, the Marvel snipers got to him, he almost immediately deleted his post after making it. But the Spider-Verse pictures he posted also kind of make you wonder if he was pitched a version of a multiverse story. Sometimes details like that can change during the making of movies from the time actors get pitched on coming back. Like, here's what we're thinking for your character. We bring him back and this is what the story is. Then by the time they actually get ready to film the movie, the script has already changed a couple times. So those details wind up changing as well. If he's not going to be the multiverse Electro from the Amazing Spider-Man movies, then it's more likely that they have just some references and Easter eggs to Amazing Spider-Man 2 in the stuff that he did during that movie, just as a fun wink to that. So number one, the likelihood of them actually bringing back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield both in Spider-Man 3, in addition to all the Sinister Six stuff that they're already doing through the Venom movies like Venom 2, the Morbius movie with Michael Keaton's Vulture character crossing over between different Sony and Marvel movies, it just seems really unlikely that they would try to stuff so much huge stuff into Spider-Man 3. Marvel does not need to roll that hard on Spider-Man 3. Sony has already said that they want to make Spider-Man 4 with Marvel, so they have plenty of room to do more live-action Spider-Verse if they really do want to go that far. So my expectations right now for Spider-Man 3 is that yes, there will be some multiverse elements because of the Doctor Strange of it all in the WandaVision reality warping from the WandaVision series. Cannot wait to watch her just completely mess with the MCU multiverse. But I think it's more likely that they would just include Easter eggs for the other versions of Spider-Man when they're teasing multiverse crazy elements and we won't actually see Andrew Garfield's face or Tobey Maguire's face on screen. Really good example of this is something like that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit that showed up in the Morbius trailer freaking everyone out. There's still thousands of questions about what that's supposed to mean. Most people believe that it's actually just a placeholder for Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man suit because it has been confirmed by both Kevin Feige and the Sony people that Spider-Man will eventually cross over with the Venom characters. So you could say that they're already kind of doing some live action Spider-Verse in a sense, but until Marvel and Sony release Spider-Man 3, Venom 2, and the Morbius movies, it's too soon to tell exactly how they're going to explain the logic of those crossovers. I think a lot of this just depends on how crazy you think the plot of Spider-Man 3 is going to be. So just take all these big rumors with a grain of salt. Remember, they're filming Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange 2 right now, so there's going to be a lot of this stuff flying around in the news for the next couple of months. I'll try to do as many videos as I can depending on what I think is true or what is not true. 
Leave all your requests in the comments below if you have any big questions about what's going on. But click here for the Boys Season 3 trailer and click here for my full Spider-Man 3 Electro video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.